Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here and in this video we are going to build a Padron three string cigar box guitar. Say hi to my little friend. All right, I'm gonna put him up on the shelf up here and he is going to keep his eye on us as we build this guitar. Okay, so I got a Padron box. Beautiful box, I love these Padron boxes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these guys out and I'm gonna cut these corners off and then glue these guys together and then cut the sound holes. So let's do that first. So you can see here I got the glue drying. So I'm gonna set this aside and let the glue dry. In the meantime, I went and got some neck material. This is just some dug fur. And I also found me the Lowe's fretboard. So I'm getting all this stuff. This one is going to be a 25 inch scale, just tempered fretboard. So right off the bat, what I did is I measured it so the whole beam, the whole length of the neck from the headstock to the butt is going to be 30 inches. Okay. And then the heel is going to be roughly 13 inches with a cut back there. And then that cut back is going to All right, so the next thing now we're going to do is we're going to glue this guy and then I'm going to screw it just for extra strength to help it dry nice and tight. All right, we are glued and screwed. So I keep everything nice and clean. Wipe up all the extra glue so that you don't see any of that stuff sticking out. This just makes cleaning up later easier. Right, so I'm going to set this aside and also let it dry. Next up is the fretboard. So what I do is I get double-sided sticky tape. Then I tape the template to the back side of my fretboard. And then I use this jig right here to cut out the fret slots. And you can see the uh, frets slots in there now. So next we're, we're going to glue the fretboard onto the neck. I wanted to show you real quick here. So this here is a four inch Mighty Might table saw made by Chicago Electric. I got that at uh, Harbor Freight and then I built this little jig and I have plenty of videos that show this in great detail and I just zing 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 and of course the blade goes right up through there and it's just high enough to cut the perfect fret slot. I like to put a metal ruler. It doesn't have to be metal, it just has to be something. And I, I do that just so I don't get indentations from my clamps into the fretboard. And then always wipe off that glue. It's always good to wipe it off while it's wet. And don't wait for it to dry. You're always gonna have some that's gonna squeeze out after the fact, but this this way you just get the majority. And then what I like to do also, and this is just because I have OCD, I always like to make sure that this is perfectly straight. That there's no bumps, no lumps. And 
if it is perfectly straight, I'm happy. Next, I'm gonna measure out where to put the sound holes. So using my Fibonacci golden ratio calipers, I measure this upper quadrant right here and also this way here and I will identify. Oh yeah, I also use this center thing here to find the center. So using these, this and this, I determine where the sound hole is gonna be. I have all different sizes of these circular bits. That one sounds like a cowbell. So I've decided to use this size and I measured it out and then So as far as this measurement goes, so that's in the center top quadrant. And then this way, it's in the center this way. Again, I use this guy to line them all up straight. So with that being said, how we doing? He says, if you like these videos, be sure to hit like, comment, subscribe, and share. That's what he says. And then I take a file and sandpaper and just make them look a little cleaner. I dress them up on both the inside and the outside. Next, I'm going to install the jack. Now there's a lot of debate <clears throat> going out there. Is it an input jack? Is it an output jack? Well, according to the package that I get from cbgiddy.com, it doesn't say if it's an input jack or an output jack. It's just an audio jack. So because I'm in a mood, if you call it input jack, I call it output jack. If you call it output jack, I call it input jack. And the reason being is because I'm dyslexic and I have the right to be opposite. Ain't that right? All right, so what I do next is I get a drill that is the right size for the threads here. And then I just uh, make sure that I'm in the right spot, which is about right there. And then of course I safely Now, one thing I wanted to point out is listen to the sound of this box. Listen to this. Dude, this box is going to be amazing. Ta-da! Okay, so remember these things here? These are the little circle things I cut out from here? Well, I use these because they tell me how deep I need to cut my down right here. So I'm gonna cut down here the exact thickness of the top of the cigar box. And then back here, I'm going to double it, maybe triple it, depending on how much action I want. And that's called the back angle. So I'm going to draw a line here, and it's going to go down this way, and that's how I achieve my back angle. I'll show you exactly what I mean. All right, here's a really good visual picture of what I got going on here. So this, again, this thickness right here is the exact same thickness as the cigar box guitar top. And then it goes, it gets incre uh, increasingly deeper as I go over here. Now over here, it's about three times or maybe two and a half times the depth. 
So this is very important. In fact, if you're not incorporating the back angle into your cigar box guitar build, hang your head in shame. No, I'm serious. If there's anything that I can like suggest that will improve the quality of your cigar box guitar builds, it is this very subtle, nuanced innovation, the back angle. And what that does is that it gives you more higher action up here so that your pick is not hitting the top of the cigar box guitar. And if you're anything like me and you like and you're, you like playing, you're, you're like doing a bunch of this, and the last thing you want is the, that pick to be constantly hitting the top of the cigar box, especially with a piezo because it's just noisy. So what this back angle does is it, it in, makes the action higher over here and you can still get good, perfect action over your frets, but over here you get more, just more room for your hands to just get all crazy. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but trust me when I say you're gonna love it if you haven't tried it yet. So this, this here, I'm gonna go cut it out now. You wanna make sure to take these screws out before you start cutting this because you don't wanna ruin your saw blade. Now, I also am going to cut this little section out and I this, the rule of thumb is is I use the same gap here so I'm going to cut out this uh, portion of the headstock as well and that's just so the tuners can can reach through here but I, I usually use the same gap or the same depth here as I do over here you don't have to but for me it's just easy just to set up the saw blade once and then Get her done. Now, I'm also going to use the half round router to take the edges off of here and then start filing it. So I'm not gonna um, show you guys that just because I don't wanna have to set up the camera again, but I'm gonna use my router and route the edges of this and then use my table saw and cut this down and the back angle. All right, now the fun begins my Shinto rasp and this these rasps are just crazy they're just like little saw blades that are like connected together they have a, a, a fine side and a coarse side and these things here they these these things get the job done oh my gosh so now I'm going to just um, start shaping and this is where I just I, I turn off the brain and I just get in the zone and I just start filing and carving and um, hours can go by when I just, you know, just start, seriously, this is like, it's therapy. It's therapy. I'm telling you there therapy after filing comes sanding. <clears throat> and again, I just take my time and I just start off with, with the, um, heavy grit and then work my way to finer and finer and finer. Now the problem here is, is that this is a dusty, dirty, dirty job. You might want to do this outside, unless you got a good vacuum cleaner and you like vacuuming. If you do, if you like cleaning up, then by all means you can do it anywhere you want. Um, I have lots of sawdust. I call it man glitter. You can definitely sand and sand and sand to your heart's content. So you, I've gone all the way up to like, gosh, 2000 grit, not on this one here, but it, uh, on previous builds and where you just get this thing just as like glass. But now is the time if you want to decide to stain it or paint it or put oil on it, whatever finish you are, you're going to put on here um, before you put the frets on, or you can put, you can do it after the, after you do the frets. That's also nice too. In this case here, I'm going to stain it with a cherry stain because I know the cherry stain kind of really is going to match the box. So, but before I did that, I wanted to point out one more thing here. And you'll notice an extra notch. In addition to the back angle, I have a little notch here that starts right here and goes all the way to right here. So my piezo is going to go right here. This is where the saddle goes. And this notch, you can see here, there's a little gap. See that little gap? 
And that is so that this wood right here does not come in contact with the top of the cigar box. And so what that does is it greatly enhances the acoustic tone of your cigar box guitar and it also reduces unnecessary, unwanted, unmusical buzzing and vibrations. So the only place that it's actually coming in contact with the cigar box guitar top is right here and then right here where the piezo goes. So the next step here is I'm going to drill out with a Forstner bit where the uh, piezo is going to go and then stain the neck and then start installing the frets. So that's what's next. Here we go with the cherry stain. So what I do is I just get a Q-tip and then rub it on. Mm, yep, yeah. and you can already see how the color is going to match almost perfectly. Next, we're going to notch out the box. And I have a very important tool here. Again, I get this at CB Giddy. And this is just one of those center, center notches. Now, what I do specifically, though, is spe uh, especially on these kind of boxes where you can see the edge, and going back to our to the depth that we cut this guy down to. Okay, so what I want is I want that exact depth to be the, the top of... I want this shelf here to be underneath that top there. So what I do is I line it up right there, and then underneath here I mark it. That way I know that it, the bottom cut is going to be exactly where it needs to be so that this top shelf sits right underneath the box. So that's very important and I hope I explained that well. So after I measure it, center it, and mark it, then what I do is I get my little Dremel start it that way and then I will get the little fretting saw and I use this saw for everything and then cut it out exactly now what I do is I usually cut on the inside of the line that way I can use the file to file it and get a nice tight perfect perfect fit all right we are notched and now we're ready to just Put blocks on the inside but I just want to point out that color match look at that that's almost perfect seriously seriously all right so now I'm going to block it and then let the glue dry what I mean by block it is put these blocks underneath here so I'm going to put a, a smaller one here and a thicker one here because of the back angle and I'll show you what I mean here all right, here's another little tip. Remember this little wedgie piece here that I cut off to form the back angle? Well, anyhow, so it's a nice wedge. See how it's thin here and thicker here? So what I do is I like to cut these things up into smaller little, little pieces. So that gives me thin pieces or thicker pieces. And so then I can exactly get my little blocks under here to be the exact right thickness perfectly. So I glued one here and two here. And then I measured, not measured, but I put it in and then close it down and made sure that it closed on this side because if, if you have too much, then this side won't close. And then what I do is, is that I put it in and I feel, I, I, basically I 
pull it this way here and if there's any gap here it'll it'll pop up on here but you'll know when you got it because there, there's, there's no wiggle room at all it's just nice and tight provided that this box is is shut so the box is shut and we're nice and tight so that means that my little blocks are perfect and again you can hear that resonance wow now it's time to fret and what i mean by fret is not to worry but to actually install the frets in your cigar box guitar so i use the jumbo for the zero fret and that's in place of a nut and then i also use the medium mediums for the normal frets first thing you want to do is you want to clean out your fret slots in case there's any kind of sawdust or glue or anything that's in there you want to make sure that these are all clean because if there's debris and stuff in your fret slots then you'll have a high fret and so you want to make sure that those you can also get a vacuum and vacuum those things out whatever whatever it takes to get all the gunk out of those fret slots you need to do that i also recommend getting yourself a little hammer this one here's got a teflon side and then a brass side i use the teflon side and then also some wire cutters now these wire cutters here are special because they have a, a bevel on here i know i know you can't really see it in this light here but there's actually no bevel here this is just flat 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 there is no bevel what i mean by bevel is that it does there's no like indentation there so so when i cut this side here it's like perfectly flat up against the edge of the fretboard now i have videos explaining and showing and demonstrating these things in great detail so you might want to check those out but i'll show you how to do how to do one normally i do this on the table but because i don't want to like reposition the camera i'm just going to do it quick and dirty right here so um, you're going to put that little the little tang part see the part with all the little bumps those are like little barbs and you're going to insert those into your cleaned out fret slot and uh, you don't you don't glue these things i mean you can if you have a rogue uh, fret but normally they just push right in there and um again normally you're doing this on a um, surface and then you're going to get your flat side not the beveled side but the flat slide and that's the first one that's the jumbo and for those of you who are interested i do use a little file and put a little notch there kind of like a nut in the jumbo and that's just to keep the strings from sliding around because i like to bend a lot so uh, of course we're going to file these edges down and make them all smooth and dress so they don't pop out and stuff like that but that's basically how you install the frets now that i've got all the frets installed i'm going to take these edges off and i'm going to use that grinder and this little guy is going to keep his eye on me so check this out So these three here, you can kind of, there you go, you can see it right there. So these three, one, two, three, I grind them down so that they're smooth, they don't stick out. And this is just the course adjustment. I'm going to go back with files and sandpaper after that, but I just want to make them smooth so they don't stick out right here. Next, I have this special file called a Fret Guru. And this thing here has got smooth side. It's a, it looks like a square, right? Smooth side and then a grit side, smooth side and a grit side. And so what I'd like to do is I like to take the smooth side and put the smooth side on the fretboard so it's not doing anything. And that means the grit side 
It's actually touching the, the fret. And then with one move, I just go right over the top. Just like that, one move. And I do just, just, just one side of it. And I'll do the same thing for the next fret. Up and over, up and over, up and over, up and over. And then we're gonna go back and then we're gonna sand everything down and then uh, maybe hit it with some more stain again just to, because uh, uh, obviously we're taking off some, some of the wood there and some of the stain. So we'll go back and we'll restain it. But uh, this is how you're gonna take off the sharpness of the edges of the frets there. And then after you file them smooth, I get 320 grit sandpaper. And then I just look for a nice polish on the fret ends. They should turn into like little mirror surfaces. And you know if you got it good. Ultimately, you're going to run your thumb over it and it's just going to be smooth as glass. Smooth as glass. After your blocks have dried, then you drill it and screw it. I like to use those little finishing washers right here. And then go back and then just double check everything. Man, that is tight, tight, tight. Okay, so now we are going to install our piezo. Now I've already used my Fosner bit and drilled out my little hole. So I'm going to embed it in P uh, hot glue and put my piezo in it and then smash the lid down on top of it. I'll show you how to do that. All right, these piezos come in all shapes and sizes. You have these long rod styles short little three string rod styles. Of course you have the disc piezos and these are the ones I use most of the time. So they come in different sizes. These are the large, medium, small. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here is that the outside here, that's the ground. And then this inside here, that's kind of white, whitish. You can see right there. That's the, the, the red side. So the black is going to go to the outside and the hot is going to go to the inside. That's very important. You don't want to like mess that up. If you do, it's not going to sound right. Uh, trust me when I say it's not going to sound right. So the first thing you're going to do is cut a sheet of paper about the same width as your neck. It doesn't have to be exact, but I'll show you the why here in a little bit. Then heat up your glue gun. And then next we're going to put a generous amount in the hole here with the Fosner bit. And then, oh yeah, notice how I have like a little um, trough right here. So the piezo is going to go into the hot glue and then the leads are going to go through that little wire there. Again, you want to keep everything You want to keep everything and that glue is hot so I recommend using an implement of some sort and you kind of got to be a little bit quick about it because it's gonna dry on you and these leads are not cooperating with me haha <laughs> I need both hands all right here we go so you, you uh, route the wires through the little trough And we'll solder them up in a little bit. And then we're going to put more hot glue in on top. And naturally, I'm out of hot glue. No! Good thing I have more. Okay, you don't want to be stingy with the hot glue, you want to be generous. And 
then while it's still hot, you put your paper right over the top of it. Make sure your leads are inside because you want to close the box and have it smash that hot glue right up against the underside of the box, right where the saddle's going to go. So, and in fact, you can even feel it. You can feel that heat coming through the top of the box. So that's how you get a positive contact between the, the lid of the cigar box guitar and then the piezo. There's no air, there's no gap. It's just a perfect, perfect um, contact point. That paper is so that the hot glue doesn't stick to the underside of the cigar box top. Look at that, perfect. Perfect. All right, we soldered the pickup to the jack. By we, I mean me. And then I'm starting to, um, I drill the holes in the corner here so I could screw, screw them in. And also I'm letting the uh, soldering iron continue to heat up so I can burn in the position markers. And this is just to secure the top down, even though it is tight to begin with, this just makes it extra tight, thus extra resonant. Yepers. All right, so whenever you burn in your position markers, you don't want to make a mistake. Because if you do, um, it's kind of a permanent, permanent mark. So you, oh, just kidding. It's in the right spot. Third fret. So third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, ninth fret, and then a double dot at the twelfth. So this is going to look nice and handsome when it's done. Alright, all the position markers are burned in. Next is the tuners. And the hinge. <coughs> Got the hinge right here. Three holes for three strings. And then a saddle. And then strings. And then music. Tuners installed, hook installed. So, <clears throat> what, I, what I've done here is, uh, remember this little template here? What I did is I measured the typical string separation here. And then what I do is I just put it on the zero fret center it up and then with a sharpie just put a little dot right where they go so I can get my little file and get a pre precise groove no guesswork And it's, per, and it's the same on every guitar. We installed the hinge. And now I'm ready for the saddle. So I measured out 25 inches and I put a little mark right there. A little tick mark. That's exactly where the saddle goes. And then what I did is I I got a junk drawer over here that's got a bunch of pre-made saddle pieces and I found the, the right height one that I need. Now, 
Remember we talked about the back angle? Well, this is where you're going to see the back angle displayed. So I get my straight edge ruler and I put one side on the, on the jumbo and the other side on the saddle. And what I'm looking for is the action here at the 17th fret. So this is going to be basically the string, maybe just a little bit higher because I have a little a fret here. So that's all I do is I just select the right size saddle piece to give me the right action. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, uh, you can see that I put a little groove in there for the fret. And then I'm going to carve this thing up and then stain it to match. And then I'm ready to put some strings on this thing. And then what I do is I get a nail and put a nail through the string ends and then through the holes in the hinge. And then down to this side. And I have a nifty little tool. It's that little tuner thing that I put in the drill bit. And that enables me to tune it up fast. These strings are made in America. All right, so this is the 44 gauge tuned to E. This is the 34 gauge tuned to B and the 26 gauge also tuned to E. So what I do is I stretch them out really good, tune them up, and then I double check here at the 12th fret and it also has to be in tune. If it's not in tune, then I adjust this saddle so that it's in tune both open and at the 12th fret. And then once I do, once they're in tune for both, and then I know that this is in the right spot. And then what I'll do is I'll just mark around this saddle so that I know exactly where it needs to go in case this ever gets moved. So here we are tuned EBE. And I'll let you hear it first unplugged before we plug it in. Again, this is the just tempered. You can always tell here because this fourth fret is a little bit skinny. That represents the major third. And listen, listen to how that major third sounds. You guys remember jingle bells? Listen to that major third. Just right on the right in the Right in the sweet spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so let's plug this thing in. All right, this is the Virgin test run. Here we go.
So I was talking to my patient little friend over there, and he wanted me to play. Um, <clears throat> he had a special request. So I told him, okay, I'll, I'll definitely play that song for you. So I dialed up some reverb, and I turned down the, um, the tone just a little bit, just to kind of get a more mellower sound, I guess. If you like these videos, be sure to comment, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.